Difference in differences is one of the most widely applied methods for estimating causal effects of programs when the program was not implemented as a randomized control trial. In this video, I will describe the situations where the method is applicable and give you the intuition behind it. I will also explain how and why you might want to use regression to estimate diff and diff effects. Throughout, I will talk about the key assumption required for the diff and diff estimate to be valid. Suppose Sao Paulo, the, big, the largest city in Brazil, institutes a free lunch program in its elementary schools in 2009. There are many reasons to expect students to perform better in school if they are guaranteed a free meal in the middle of the day, but it would be nice to know how large such effects might be. Suppose also that Brazilian fifth graders take a standardized math test at the end of every year. How might we evaluate the effects of this program on test scores? One way to evaluate the program would be to compare test scores of kids in Sao Paulo in 2010 with the scores of Sao Paulo kids who took the exam in 2008 before the program was implemented. This difference is certainly partially due to the program. We're going to call that difference D1. And D1 is certainly partially due to the program. But suppose there was an important international soccer tournament during the week of the exam in 2008, but not in 2010. This tournament might also influence the difference in the test scores between the two periods. So what we have is that D1 is both the program effect and what we're going to call the trend. What else might have, the difference due to what else might be happening at the same time. Now suppose we also observe test scores in 2008 and 2010 in Rio, another large city in Brazil, not far to the north on the coast. If we're willing to assume that the difference across time in Rio is reflective of what would have happened in Sao Paulo, then we can use the difference D2 as an approximation of what the trend is, and we get our first difference in difference estimate. That is, the difference in the differences, D1 minus D2. It's not the only way to get the diff and diff estimate from this data, though. You can also start with the diff simple difference between the test scores in Sao Paulo and Rio in 2010. Let's call that difference D3. This difference is going to be the sum of the program effects and whatever differences might exist between the two areas that has nothing to do with the program. If we're willing to assume that these area differences the area differences that existed in 2008 were approximately the same, then we can look at that difference in 2008, call that D4, and we get another estimate of the diff and diff effect. That is D3 minus D4. It turns out these two different difference and difference effects are algebraically identical. That means if either one of the assumptions we had to make sounds fishy to you, then you should be worried about the validity of, of the diff and diff estimate. In most, but not all cases, you'll use the diff and diff to estimate the program effect when you have one group that is affected by the program and another that is not, and you observe outcomes of both groups before and after program implementation. If the treatment is random, you don't need a diff and diff to get unbiased estimates of the effect. You can simply look at differences between the treatment and the control groups. That said, even in those cases, a diff and diff can sometimes improve the precision of your estimates. If you're sure that nothing else changed between your, the measures of your outcomes before and after program implementation, then you could do a simple before-after difference to get the effect, but that's a rarely reasonable assumption. If the treatment was assigned to different groups based entirely on observable characteristics, you could use multiple regression and control for these characteristics to get an estimate of the program effects. Unfortunately, 
you often don't know how the program was assigned or what other differences might exist between the treatment and control groups. As we've seen, the diff and diff estimate is straightforward. You start with the means of the four groups. You create the pre-post differences for treatment and control and then difference them. To make sure you're getting the idea, I suggest pausing the video now and computing the diff and diff estimate for the hypothetical free lunch program using this hypothetical data. Okay, good. Now, note that we observe test scores increase by about 70, or exactly 70, in Sao Paulo, but they increased by 40 in Rio. And so if we think that they would have increased by about 40 already in Sao Paulo, no matter what, then we have our diff and diff, we can compute a diff and diff estimates, which is going to be the trend, the change over time in Sao Paulo minus the change over time in Rio, which is going to be an increase of 30 points on this math test. As we've seen, all we really need is aggregate level data to compute the estimate, but we can also compute the required sample averages from repeated cross-sectional data if we have that, that is separate samples for each cell, or longitudinal data, where we observe the same people in both time periods. If you happen to have individual level data, either cross-sectional or longitudinal, you can often estimate more flexible models that don't rely on assumptions as strong as the pure diff and diff model that we've been talking about. Here we have pooled data on kids before and after the intervention in both Sao Paulo and Rio. Y is the variable holding the test score. DTR is a dummy variable equal to one if the individual who took the test was in the control group. And D post is equal to one if the individual took the test after the intervention. So for example, Miguel got a 40 on the test and he took the test in Rio, the control group, and he took it before program implementation in Sao Paulo. Sophia, on the other hand, got 100 on the test. She took the test in Sao Paulo after program implementation. That is, she got the free lunch. You might want to pause the video again and compute the same sample averages we just used to compute the diff and diff estimate. You should get identical numbers. Because we now have individual level data, we can also estimate the difference in difference using a plain old regression model. All we have to do is regress our outcome variable on the two dummy variables, D post, the dummy variable for whether the individual was measured before or after the program, and DTR, the dummy variable for whether or not the individual is in the treatment group, and the interaction of the two. The coefficient on the interaction is going to be our diff and diff estimate. So here's the data we were just looking at. We've got our 10 observations. We've got our same three variables. All we have to do is first create the interaction. So I'll interact the treatment dummy and the post period dummy by creating a new variable, which is just the two multiplied together. And now I just run the regression. Regress y on the dummy variable for the treatment, dummy variable for the post period, and the interaction. And what we can see is that the coefficient on the interaction is 30, exactly what we got when we did it by hand, did the diff and diff by hand. So why does this work? When we run the regression, we're saying we believe test scores are determined by this regression model. If we take the conditional expected value of y, take the expected value of y given all of our independent variables, we get this linear combination and the error term drops out. We can plug in these different values, say the post dummy variable equal to zero and the treatment dummy variable equal to zero, when we plug in those values, we get these population means shown in the table. So the expected value of the test score in the pre-period 
in the control area, so that would be Rio, uh, is just going to be beta zero. And similarly, in the post period, in the treatment area, the expected score is going to be the whole thing. B0 plus B1 plus B2 plus B3. The difference in difference estimate for the population is easy to compute. The difference across time in the control group right here, remember that was D1, actually that was D2, that's going to be just beta 1. The difference across time in the treatment group is going to be beta 1 plus beta 3. And the difference between the two is beta 3. When we run this regression, we're getting an estimate, an unbiased estimate of this coefficient, which again is our difference in difference estimate. So we can do it, but why would we want to compute our difference in difference estimate using a regression? Well, there are three reasons. First of all, anytime we run a regression, our stats software is going to give us estimates of the standard errors for our coefficients. We don't have to do anything special at all, and we get standard errors for our diff and diff estimates. That's convenient. Second, we can add additional controls. That's what these X's are. If the trends in the treatment and control areas unrelated to the program are different because of differences in observed characteristics, for example, socioeconomic status, we can control for these differences and still get an unbiased estimate of the program effects. Finally, if we control for important determinants of y, that's going to reduce the variance of epsilon, our error term, and thus give us smaller standard errors for our estimate of the program effect. So at the end of the day, when is a difference in difference estimate a good estimate of the causal effect of the program? Let's think back to Sao Paulo and Rio. Suppose Sao Paulo was picked for the program specifically because kids were worse off there. That's OK for the difference in difference because that's a pre-existing difference between the treatment and control groups, and we take care of that. Now, on the other hand, what if Sao Paulo and Rio were the same in 2009, but the policy team decided to run the program in Sao Paulo because they knew a free lunch program was being implemented in Rio already, and they didn't want to conflict with it? Well, that's not OK. If we have reason to believe the trends unrelated to the program might not be in the same might not be the same in the two groups, then the diff and diff estimate will give you a, the wrong answer.